Hi everyone, welcome back to another pick a card reading for the heart and soul. I'm Cheryl Lee Harnish. Hi. And I am the author of the Path of the Soul, Divine Guidance, and Return of Spirit deck. So, today's reading. Huh. What lesson does your spirit guide want to talk about? Like what lessons are coming into your life that maybe you're having trouble with? I mean, most of us do. Um, integrating and really um, coming through the challenge. So um, before we get into our choices, I just want to say for the last few weeks, your messages have like, they have brought tears to my eyes. Thank you, you guys, for all the amazing things you say. And even, you know, when you guys talk to each other, even in the comments, it, it really touches me because to me, this is like the feeling of um, community, you know, spiritual community. And um, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And also, I'm going to ask you to check your subscription. It sounds like a strange request. However, I've had numerous, numerous people tell me they didn't know I was back um, because they were suddenly unsubscribed to my channel. And it, it and it's apparently been quite a large number, so I don't know what's going on with our lovely YouTube hosts here, <laughs> but something weird. So just keep an eye on that. If you don't see my videos coming in, maybe just check your subscription. Okay, so down to our choice. So we're gonna do our two-tiered reading, as always. And I thought, you know, you guys seem to really like the sound choices, um, picking your cards by sound. So I thought, why don't we do it for our main card reading, right? Because that's where all the juicy stuff is. So what I'm going to get you to do is just settle yourself wherever you're sitting or lying. Take a breath. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, okay? So the first sound that I'm going to ring is for our choice number one, which is the tinctures. Ooh, it's very cleansing. Like, I love that, okay. Choice number two is our middle selection here, and it is going to be our singing bowl. Okay. All right, I'm getting really zenned out. <laughs> all the sounds which is good okay so I'm gonna try to lift this um, Ganesh chimes and this will be choice number three okay guys Ooh, that's really a higher chakra kind of um, sound because it hits me high with that light and tinkly okay so tinctures choice number one singing bowl choice number two chimes is choice number three and down below we have our I love it tickle trunk full of charms so we'll say our treasure chest full of charms and this will be choice a choice b and choice c all right so pick one from the top and one from the bottom and i will see you guys in just a second hi group one how are you okay let's see if we can get these down without a clang so what cards does spirit have for you what lessons are you learning here okay so we're going this way and we have the goddess card interesting we're just going to get them out here we have inflow, which, oh, I gotta point out that that's master number 11, so we have a master number coming out. Ooh, we have Earth Angel talking about some sensitive souls here today. And we have the 
um, cellular healing card. I had to think about that for a sec. So I'm just going to get out our deck and we're going to add two more to this and see what's coming here. I'm just um, trying to see the story because, you know, when that cellular healing comes out, clearly the universe spirit is talking to you about your healing process. And I wouldn't be surprised if for some of you, you've had some um, physical ailments uh, along with um, whatever emotional things you're carrying, because this is talking about things that we carry on a really deep level that we actually kind of, you know, ha you've heard of cellular memory. And it's almost like, you know, not dealing with the emotional stuff that we have and we like stuff it away energetically and it literally physically gets stored in the body, you know, uh, for later. <laughs> and so it's, it is talking about some of that coming up or have having been coming up and having to deal with your own healing process whether that is really deep into like the physical because with that cellular healing card I do see that as like this amazing cell with all the like mitochondria and the DNA and all of that inside of it and I feel like they are talking about some sort of oh, literally flow um, healing flow you moving through getting out of this emotional or physical state that you've kind of found yourself in okay now before i get on to the other cards here i just want to get these out uh, it looks like i threw it but i didn't <laughs> okay and we need one more group one card lessons yeah this is the one. Oh my goodness okay so we have the faith card which i always see these it's i hope you can see it on camera i always see these as like these big beautiful wings coming out of the center which really goes along with that earth angels there's a similarity with these looking like wings as well so we have the faith card and we have being difficult with me it doesn't want to come up uh okay the divinity card so with with both the faith and divinity card coming up here and uh, um along with this earth angel card because i feel like the earth angel card is the one that really is holding this whole reading together because when the earth angel card comes up it tells me that you are one of these really sensitive souls like you're empathic you feel the emotions of others or you're like one of those highly highly sensitive people that things that maybe others could you know brush off let go just overcome they affect you deeply like on a very deep level in your heart in your, in your mind and i often say this with um people who 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 pull the um, earth angel card it's almost like you have this velcro brain and that anything that's negative or you know slightly twerked away from the positive it's like it sticks to your brain like velcro and you have a hard time pulling off this stuff and with that i feel like that really you know is why they there are these emotional, physical things that need to get dealt with, cleared up, cleared out. And but I feel like they're they're talking about in one way you doing that work. I do have to say, I don't feel like they're saying, you're so stuck, you're stuck in this lesson and you're not getting it. I feel like a lot because they've got that faith card coming up here, that a lot of what they're saying is just, you know, this is a process, you're growing you're growing through this process literally and that whatever has been going on here you guys it is not forever that there is light at the end of the tunnel here for you and i feel like you're they're talking about you like overcoming this but the biggest thing that that comes here is the inflow card i mean it is a master number 11 so which is like a builder number which is building up on things. So it's almost like 
this stuff that you're learning about your own healing healing others that's also a big part of this right because a lot of you guys um, who are here with this these kind of sensitivities are here to bring some form of healing to the world or even on a smaller scale to the people around you through your own journey right so yes this is a card for healers I have to mention that because it's getting nannered at me before I carry on with the inflow but the inflow card is talking about um, the energies moving for you getting you out of that feeling you know feeling stuck sort of energy but what I'm finding interesting is that we have the goddess card here and with the goddess card you know reds and yellows so it's a very grounded energy but it's really talking about stepping into the feminine and I know we have a lot of male viewers and it can get confusing when you have a card that's goddess and feminine energy and stuff but this really is about each of us whether you're male or female embracing more of these feminine type qualities that lead to your empowerment because the goddess card is an, an empowerment card and it's being empowered in that n n deep nurturing gift and abilities that you have that tenderness of your heart and um you know other things anything that relates to more feminine energy which is like intuition communication um, nurturing healing um, you know that globe of things and I feel like they're kind of talking about that what you've been going through is helping you to develop that in a, in a really grounded strong way with all this yellow in here in a way that brings you to a place of empowerment and then by pulling this divinity card or it jumping out I should say that it is talking about this being a part of one of these really deep lessons like soul lessons that you signed up for before you came which can sometimes suck I know <laughs> but um, that through this process it's bringing you into that place of really cleaning yourself claiming your wings giving you the strength and the power to really become your true and authentic self in this healing because this healing there's something about this reading um, that is talking about you being a healer in some capacity in some level um, just take the readings for example my my intention is not to help others heal I'm just doing a reading but inadvertently in what I'm doing it does help bring or facilitate an opening or a platform for healing so I don't want you guys to get stuck on the idea of thinking of just healing like just Reiki I mean there's so many different forms but it's in the process of your own healing that you really come into your true empowerment with this so that's why you're having such a big lesson around it so I feel like they're really trying to encourage you guys this week okay but there's more to your reading um, and we have one of our treasure boxes here a B or C and that will really lend and shed some light onto this and tell you what else is going on as far as what your guides want you to know all right if you liked your reading hit the like and I'll see you guys over here for part two see you in a minute Hi group two, how are you? Just let you soak that up for a minute. Okay. I'm trying to do this without making a bunch of noise. Okay. What does your spirit guide have for you as far as what your big lesson is that you're learning right now or the lesson that they want to help you with most? Okay, group two, what lesson what do they need to know about that? Okay, so going this way, 
Mm, nice. Right off the bat, we have a master number 33. We have Quan Yin. And you can see her sitting. That's her head and her body. And she's sitting kind of cross-legged here. And Quan Yin, master number 33. This is a higher level energy that you're working with. And the big thing about Quan Yin is that she's talking about compassion compassion for yourself compassion which then you learn to have compassion for others but that it starts here it starts at home so I have to say with that first card coming right out like you guys are being hard on yourselves you're not giving yourself that kind of leeway and openness that you would offer to other people like your family members or your best friends and this is kind of like one of those mm -hmm -hmm. you need to remember to come at that place of compassion like love for yourself right okay next out we have the revealed card and this you know it looks like the cosmos um, opening here and in a way, this is this card is a, is about you know kind of overcoming our own challenges and overcoming that old part of us that wants to kind of keep us hidden and keep us small. And this is talking about like opening to the greatness of who you are um, and revealing some of yourself to the world, coming into that place where you feel safe enough to do it and I like in the booklet it says um, you know because this is about you sharing your love with yourself and sharing your love with the world in some way some capacity but you know first you have to show up and so you know with that Quan Yin, Quan Yin card being here along with that revealed like they're talking about getting out of that place of like judging self judging yourself, being hard on yourself, the I'm not, I'm not, hmm, and then fill in the blank, right? Because that coming from that place of compassion is going to give you the space to uh, uh, compassion for yourself, to allow yourself to be out the way, there the way you would encourage your best friend, right? Like this is kind of the mindset that you need to come at this with, right? Okay, so we have the Speak Your Truth card, and I, I think there was a lot of communication cards coming out last week. So if you, you know, I always say this, if you are getting like the, a repeated message, either in my readings or any other card readings on YouTube, um, there's a message that you're not hearing. There's something not happening. But with that Speak Your Truth card, like there's every shade of blue going on here and it comes into this really rich almost indigo higher chakra level sort of being and the speak your truth card is talking about you coming to that coming to that place where you give yourself that space to really begin to express what it is you need to express and, you know, oftentimes that's in our personal relationships. But I mean, that can filter through to your path and purpose. Say you want to, you know, do videos like I'm doing here and you're still afraid to let the world see you and telling yourself you're not enough and you're not good enough and blah, 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 blah. We're putting that out, right? Because there is something about you giving voice giving life this expression this communication in some sort of way oh and we have the dragon guide card now it's hard to see i always say this it's it is harder to see it but there's this like massive dragon hiding in this card and that card is that it's it's really one of these kind of empowerment cards because it's talking about it's okay to stand your ground it's okay that to speak your truth and let yourself be seen and that sometimes 
you need to breathe a little fire because there's something when this card comes out there's something about the opinions of i of others the ideas of others or you know even just the idea or opinion of we what we believe other people hold of us there's something about you and other people and what you believe they're believing or what they're putting out onto you and you standing up for yourself you just standing your ground and breathing a little fire if you need to and this isn't about you know burning the village down this is just about you claiming your space okay so there's a there's a huge lesson here for you guys about standing up taking your place in this role uh, world and being out here oh nice and we have the shifting card so that tells me when that shifting card comes out that um either you are feeling a little bit unstable like the ground is shaky in where you want to head or what you want to do and um you know when things are in the place of a shift for us in our lives symbolically it is like that earthquake and the ground doesn't always feel stable and solid and a lot of the times it's difficult for us you know the the thinking conscious human mind to go oh good i'm just gonna step out here and you know do what i need to do and put myself out into the world even though i have no clue what i'm doing and everything feels um shaky and um i was gonna say unsolid but i don't even think that's a word but um you know, it's difficult for us to take those steps, even though it feels that way. And the shifting card is saying it's OK to keep going. And this is a big part of your lessons here, you guys, is that it's OK to keep going. It's OK to keep forging forward, even if you don't know exactly where you're heading, that just this process of allowing yourself this openness this expression to be who you are out here in the world from this place of deep compassion for yourself and others um that you will find your way your way will be revealed you just have to step start stepping even though it doesn't feel solid because it will settle down that's the main thing with this card is that once you get through this bit it will stop it will start to settle down for you and oh my goodness. And the last card we have is the recognition card. I can't believe that. Okay. I mean, that just so goes with everything that we've been talking about. And you know, this recognition card is like these, it's really majestic. And in real life, it doesn't translate well, but in real life, it looks metallic, like it's alive, that the energy is alive. And this is about coming into your own empowerment. And the recognition card is about you gaining some sort of recognition out here in the world. But the other thing is that it is about you recognizing, you know, self-compassion, recognizing these things within yourself, you know, seeing the good that you are, seeing the good that you have to contribute, seeing the good that your voice and what you have to communicate um does out here in the world and i feel like they're they're actually hinting because the shifting card is coming out is also like a recognition of okay you know what this is where i need to go and this is where i need to head or you know like aim my arrows so to speak where to shoot so i feel like there's this direction coming in for you guys and like this is what they're talking about with this lesson that you're going through in moving through this okay so this is not the end of the, your reading we still have choice our uh second choice which is our charms if you liked your reading here please do hit the like um, I do want to say I am available for personal readings and all my information is down below in the comment section. And I will see you guys in just a sec. Hi group three, how are you? Okay, so what does your spirit guides want you to know about this lesson? that you are going through right now 
What does group three need to know about this lesson that they're going through now? What are they learning? I feel like that top one is just like, we've got to take it. Okay. So what do we have? Okay. We have the dreaming card and that dreaming card, um, you know, you see all these greens in here there's a huge element of healing going on for you, but this is more like, you know, on a soul level or cosmic level, you know, um, I mean, of course, it would, could be happening and being reflected here in the physical, in your personal life. But there is some sort of healing on a spiritual level that's going on for you. And with that dreaming card, it's talking about paying attention to your dreams. Like, if you guys are remembering your dreams, be sure to write them down. Like, do a journal and date it. Like, this date this is what I dreamt and um, you know there are some dream dictionaries online I'm a little bit leery because a lot of them are really hokey um, but there is an Edgar Casey. Um, Edgar Casey was like the sleeping prophet one of the greatest prophets of our time and um, he actually has a well he doesn't the, uh, his society does has a dream dictionary so the Edgar Casey dream J dictionary um, I'm I would say to bookmark that because it can help give you clues to some of the symbolisms in your dream now I know some of you may not be remembering your dreams and you know that really depends on you know where you're at in your life and how stressed you are but there is some sort of healing that's happening in in the dream time right out of body out you go and but the other thing with the dreaming card is that it's talking about needing to take time to meditate like it's almost like talking about needing to get into this delta theta state and um, finding that little piece of time or chunk of time for yourself so I don't know if you guys have been like struggling with meditating or what's what's going on there I mean you will know let's get out more cards and see what this is talking about here okay we have another master number that's every single reading this week has had a master number in it so we have master number 44 okay and this card is called birth of angels and I see this as this main angel and all these little souls these angels from infinity are rising and when this card comes out that tells me that you guys have gone through a difficult time you know some people they they don't seem to get quite as many challenges and it can feel like you're just one after another challenge after challenge and you know sometimes life can feel like struggle and you know, we get to the point where we're like, what the, is this even worth it? Like, what the heck is going on? And this card comes whenever we need to know that the angels are with us. That, like, our angels, our spirit guides, I don't actually have a spirit guide card. And this reading is what your guides want you to know. But, like, your guides, your angels, spirit, the universe is right here. They are working with you. And I know that it can feel like you're all alone here in what you're doing. But I promise you, you guys, you are absolutely not alone in this. And there is a reason for what is going on. And for whatever reason, they're really bringing home the fact that, you know, your time in taking time to meditate and and consciously, intentionally making that connection back to them is something that's very important here, okay? So let's just see what else we've got. Nice. We have the resolutions card. And I always see this as like um, four different pieces that almost like a puzzle that we need to rotate and twist to get it to fit to make the picture right, okay? and. With, when the resolutions card comes out, they're talking about literally some sort of resolution that there's something that's getting worked out. It's almost like, you know, unkinking the hose so the water can flow. 
but you know a lot of the times they're talking about on a very practical level that this happen is happening within our lives so i almost feel like this hold on kind of things like things are going to resolve here in in some way for you now just once we get out all the cards i'll really know oh okay we have we have the archangel michael card now that blows me away because we also have the birth of angels card so birth of angels and michael and i was saying that like when the birth of angels card comes out that they're talking about that you are not alone that your guides and angels are with you and then we pull out archangel michael so you know michael does he is a lot around communication and the throat chakra but it's, that's not the vibe i'm getting from this reading at all when i'm seeing these cards um what's coming to me more is this feeling of um like michael archangel michael is about protection he's about us kind of coming into our own power and you know really deciding you know he he is a relationship guy um um when we you know cord to people like energetically we're kind of entangled with people and sometimes we get entangled with the wrong people and we need to cut that energetic cord and release these people in our lives with love and i feel like there's a really strong message coming through with that michael card so there's relationship stuff that is feeding that feeling of aloneness and some sort of something working out or you know that change so that you have that sort of peace as far as who is in your life why they are in your life and whether they should be in your life right and this can also be like the opposite thing not just who i need to cut and clear out of my life but this attracting in these people who are good for you in your life who support you and love you and want to you know watch a movie and hang out and laugh and are willing to be there when things get tough for you and you're willing to be there for them you know so there is because this is about balance and there is that balancing kind of energy so i feel like they're talking like some sort of resolution coming up in that area of the people you're close to and who you can rely on and either cleaning that out or that new support coming in so let's see what our <laughs> i think it was last week this card came out and here it is again okay so we have the love card and you know this is like the earth or also you like the core of you and this big heart glowing around or the light glowing around it in the shape of a heart and while a lot of the meaning of this card is talking about allowing your light to be seen and sharing your light with the world which is an absolutely is a part of this message okay but i feel like they're talking about this big theme that i've been talking about with these cards so far with you guys is about you know this bigger lesson about love like that you are lovable that you deserve love that you have this enormous wealth and storehouse of love to share out there in the world once you get your relationships organized once you get yourself in that place of really connecting with the spirit on a deeper level to get that reminder oh yeah remind me i am love i am love and putting that out into the world so they're talking about that is what the deeper lesson is under all this fufa that's happening on the top so that's a like that's a powerful card this is a powerful reading for you guys this week <laughs> i'm giggling okay so the last card that's out is the star seed card okay and you can see our big alien friend here okay star seed that is about feeling like you're the odd man out i mean it's literally what i've been talking about here you know feeling like there's the cool kids club over here which is everybody mainstream and then there's you the lone geek all by yourself you know i'm just thinking of high school and you know feeling like you're 
you can't you don't fit into what all the sheeple people do and so you know it really does give us this sense of aloneness that's that's exactly what this card really does mean and you know with that birth of angels in the um feeling alone and loneliness um what the starseed card t is talking about is that none of this is about you fitting in with the sheeple people and you're you're not here to be a sheep you're not here to be like everybody else you are here to be this amazing person that you are what well, you know walking to the rhythm of your own drum drumming your own beat and doing it in your own unique way and that in that and just claiming yourself and saying yeah I'm weird and wonderful you know I think of that that song keeps coming in my head um I'm a freak I'm not gonna sing for you guys because it's not gonna be good but um that song I'm a freak I'm a weirdo what the hell am I doing here you know that's kind of like the theme song that's running in this reading and they're talking about just claiming your weirdo claiming your freak and really being that and emanating that and that in that you begin to gravitate and and pull in these people who are you know resonate with you and resonate with who you are and love you and all your own weird wackiness and the way that you are Okay, I'm going on and I need to stop because it's a, this is just a group reading. Um, so just so you know, I am available for personal readings, which are much more in-depth and like direct to you as an individual, much different than the, these readings. Um, and we also have part two, which is going to give you insight into some other things and maybe more insight into what we've spoken out here. So we have choice A, B, or C. Um, please do hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in just a sec. Hi, group A. All right, let's see what we've got here. I'm just gonna mix them up a little bit. Oh, well, I didn't grab very many. That's good. Oh, we've got a runaway. Okay. So let's see what we have for charms. All right. So we've got some letters. I realized last week that there was even words being written out with the letters. Um, so we have two M's or we have two W's because they don't really... Or maybe that's an M and that's a W. Hmm. I'll let you guys decide. So when we do the terms, if you're new, just so you know, these letters can often represent initials of people who are close to you or um, who will be relevant. And I mean, because this reading is about lessons that you're learning, um, it, these initials, if you will, might be they might be talking about um, people that are involved in this lesson in some way. Okay, so we have S, N, M, and W. And for our, okay, we have, we have the sign, oops, sorry guys. We have the sign of Aries, okay, and we have Scorpio. So again like the the letters these can represent signs of people who might be significant in this significant in your life in some way right now but this can this often always signifies energies that you're working with in the lessons that you're learning and it's interesting because you know aries is a fire sign and Scorpio is water so it's almost like these are two totally different sort of energies that you're learning how to integrate and combine so Aries is about um, new beginnings fresh beginnings fresh starts it's about taking action taking initiative starting things starting your project being bold and brazen in your actions um, taking actions before you think which you know 
A lot of us tend to look down on taking actions before you think, but sometimes, guys, it's a good thing because if you take action before you can think, then you can't think yourself out of it. <laughs> and a lot of the times we do think ourselves out of the things that need that we need to do. So the other energy with that Scorpio energy, so like I said, Scorpio is water and it's ruled by Pluto where Aries is ruled by Mars, which is energy in action. Um, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and with, well, also Mars actually. So that's kind of funny. So you have two Mars energy of polar, polar energies of Mars being asked to be, work together. So um, with Scorpio though, Scorpio um, is very much about uh, the deeper, the uh, deeper meanings, the underneath of what's happening. Um, it, it, it's a lot about things getting broken down to be rebuilt again. There's a lot about, uh, you know, secrecy and self-protection and learning to be okay and out here in the world without this big layer or blockage kind of dividing you from the rest of the world and it really is about integrating that energy of wanting to hide to putting yourself out there in the world which is a very interesting thing now i see we have a, a couple sea animals ocean animals here so we have i'll bring it over here we have the seahorse the whale and Let's bring her over here. We have the turtle. So, seahorse, you know, one of the things about the seahorse, which I'm sure many of you know, is that the male is the one who carries the eggs. The, the male is the one who does what we would typically um, add to the female's job, right? So, that sort of thing is about, it's about really... I feel like nurturing your masculine qualities because we have this Aries sign, but still really integrating and balance your feminine qualities, right? Because that's really what the seahorse is, is a flip of these two qualities. And I feel like they're talking about a balance in that. And the whale, whale often, I mean, there's so many things that it represents. So if you see things in here that I'm not saying, that that is a message for you never disregard your your own intuition guys um with the whale tail whale often represents creativity that creative force that like you know how they blow the air up out of the water and it's like really busting out with your creativity busting out of your confines so there's some really big creative energy or creative force working for you guys with this week and with the the turtle i have to say that really does tie in again with that scorpio energy of not wanting to be seen or you know feeling hesitant or unsafe but learning how to allow yourself to be out here to be seen but the other thing with turtle is about your pace and you know the rabbit in the hair and I feel like they are talking about taking your time with what you're doing it's not about winning the race where you're not in a rush because Aries can sometimes give us that impatience that we just want to charge through and it's kind of saying mm -mm, slow down take your time really get balanced here and I find it interesting that we have you know two charms that are one is in gold one is in silver of the exact same charm look at that we have two owls gold and silver and i feel like that is exactly what i was talking about with this seahorse you know balancing the masculine and feminine and then we have these two owls matt gold and silver masculine and feminine so gold you know uh owl owl has a lot of symbolism but, uh, you know, one of the big things is that it's a nighttime owl. They see in the dark and they are wisdom. And so there is something about seeing through the dark, which I, I really feel is like gaining um, information, gaining knowledge. And with that hot air balloon here, I feel like, you know, 
that is about rising above situations and you know people who have fear of heights they often say that um, hot air balloons feel very safe um, and I feel like this is rising above or getting a higher perspective on things in your life you know seeing things a little bit differently than you have before so we also have a few more charms here I'm, I won't have time to read them all but do pause the video and take your time to see if there's anything that draws you there okay um, I do this one is pulling me because we have the flower in the tree and I feel like they are talking about you you know moving forward taking action in a in a balanced balanced way um, and that it's very grooted grooted <laughs> grounded and rooted grooted Groot um, that really kind of settles you into something through what you're learning settles you into something that becomes a long-term thing because trees take a long time to grow and I feel like it's kind of blossoming for you guys but you're just at the beginning stages so trust this process okay um, okay I am gonna say this one too we have two hearts intertwined so I feel like a lot of what this message that we've been talking about um, can be related to close relationships whether that's love friendship um, business partnerships or whatnot okay so thank you you guys I just thank you for being here I just love 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 to read your comments and um, I will see you guys again next week take care hi groupie how are you okay so let's dig inside our little box here and try to mix them up a little I didn't quite take enough last time so let's see it's always good if we have some to choose from okay so what do we have now we have a couple letters here and um, we have H X and D as in dog so these letters often represent people who are significant to you in the lessons that you've been learning I have to say that it's that and often the X it can be an initial for a person's name but often they are referring to lessons you've learned or are learning with a partner or an X right um, and for astrological signs I'm having a hard time getting it up here Okay, so we have the sign of Aquarius and what do we have here oh okay and we have Virgo and so these are again the astrological signs can represent people who are going to be important to you over the next few weeks as far as the lessons that you're learning this can also represent the energies that you're integrating okay so with that Aquarian energy um, it's ruled by Uranus and there's a lot of um, humanitarian hum you know the greater for the greater good sort of thing you know, we've just moved into the age of Aquarius which is more about the whole and but the thing with them Aquarius what I love is like it's this free thinking like Aquarius steps out of the box they're like screw you in the stupid box that you stand in I'm standing over here and it almost reminds me of the starseed card which I pulled in one of the readings today which is being the drummer to your own beat that really does but it's also there's a lot um, Uranus the planet Uranus is the great awakener and so there is some sort of awakening energy that's coming in for you guys in the next few weeks now we also have Virgo and Virgo is you know ruled by Mercury she is a lot about communication but Virgo is also a lot a lot to do with service being in service to others um, health getting things organized um, there's quite a few different things that Virgo represents and sometimes it's about like Virgo is all about details 
And so I feel like there's something in this is like looking at the finer details of things. Now, what strikes me here is that we all, oh, look at that. I missed that. So we also have the double fish, which is the symbol for Pisces. So oh, maybe I'll move her up here, him, them, up here. So with Pisces, with that fish energy ruled by Neptune, you know, Pisces, they're amazing because they're very intuitive. They're very tuned in. They're like the psychic bunch. And there's something about intuition working here, but they're also the creative bunch as well. And there's something about it being okay to have your head in the clouds. It's okay to dream big because that's what Pisces does. It dreams big. And, it, I, you know, uh, it is about pulling out, again, kind of the same message, pulling out and see this, you know, higher perspective or higher understanding, the spiritual lessons of what's going on. Now, the other thing that's interesting is that we also have two butterflies. And this just happened in the other charms that I pulled, is that we have one butterfly in gold and one in silver. And so, you know, I see that as um, f masculine and feminine, you know, the silver being the moon feminine and the gold being related to the sun and masculine. And so there's some sort of transformation coming for you guys. And I feel like whatever this is through what you're learning is really helping to bring this beautiful balance to you. But I feel like they're also talking about it transforming you um, in in a really core way in a really deep way and you know we also have the pegasus pegasus um, which is the flying horse so again we have wings so I feel like this is your guys time to like spread your wings and fly that that through these lessons even though they are hard it can happen I mean we even have an airplane showing up here right and so again it's that flying theme and I feel like they are talking about rising above but I feel like they're also talking about taking flight like the wind beneath your wings having that sort of energy come in and um, we also have the axe showing up here and with that axe, it's literally about cutting off. And I know in one of the readings today, we were talking about cutting cords. And so the axe can be, you know, in a really balanced way, needing to, you know, sever whatever needs to be severed. Or the other um, meaning with this is, is chopping it up right which is breaking things down into smaller bite-sized pieces you know smaller like an axe chops a log into smaller pieces so we can burn them as wood so this is about taking on things in smaller chunks not taking on everything as a whole at once and just rushing in okay um the last one that i'm going to read here is we've it looks kind of strange but it's a baby grand piano and so I'm just going to stick it over here. So with that piano, I feel like that's talking about going, being in flow, being in rhythm, finding your own rhythm, your own way of doing things. It's going to be really important um, because we can just clunk onto the piano or we can like take our time and play out this tune. And I feel like this is coming into this sort of melody this sort of rhythm with things that are happening okay and i'll just flip these over for you because i can't read them all um so you can pause the video to read the last ones that are here if you'd like i want to say thank you you guys for being here as always um please do hit the like and uh, it's just such an honor to be honest so i wish you guys all my love and i will see you guys again next week take care Hi, group three. How are you? Okay. So, what do we have here for you guys this week? Oh, take that and get some of these the little ones. They always seem to fall at the bottom. Trying not, sorry, I'm trying not to take too many, but 
Okay, let's see, what do we have? So we have, to start, we have the letter M. Actually, maybe I'll bring this down closer. We have the letter M, the letter A, and is that it for letters? Oh, and the letter L. Okay, so L-A-M. Now, as far as the lessons that you're going through and what you're learning, these letters can often represent the initials of people who are important in your journey right now or with what's happening you, with you or who could be coming in. And as far as energies, I feel like we need just a couple more. I just need a couple more charms. That's better. Okay. Oh, and we have a P. Letter P. So... Now, for astrological signs, um, we have two here showing up. Um, they usually represent, they can also, like the initials, represent people who are coming into your world, who are already in your world, as far as the lessons that you are learning and conquering, that you're kicking butt with, right? And this also often is talking about the energies that you're working and in integrating as you're moving through these lessons. So the one that first one that comes up is Gemini. And so Gemini, yes, it's the twins, you know, um, but it's like having two faces. And I don't mean in that negative way of being two faced, but you know, sometimes we have that personal self that we keep hidden in a way and then we have this other face that we put out into the world and a lot of it is about being able to work the two aspects of ourselves into something that's congruent and beneficial for both sides of ourselves now the other thing with gemini is that it is ruled by mercury and so mercury is the planet of communication right um and Mercury is also uh, represents working with your hands. So, and children, for whatever reason, Mercury represents children. So these are all themes that you could be, you know, working with, but it is a lot about communication. And um, we also have Leo. So Leo ruled by the sun is also, Leo is more like family and um, that mama bear energy, like really like protective, that sort of thing. So, but Gemini represents the, the, like the youthfulness. Okay. So there's something going on here with that theme. But the big thing with Leo is that, you know, Leo is the sun and, you know, often gets pegged as the, you know, having a big ego, but I, I don't see them that way. I see them as these you know, larger than life, gregarious kind of energy. So if you're opposite of this, what I'm describing, they're talking about some of this energy integrating through the lessons you're learning. Um, and not only being like this gre gregarious, bigger than life, Leo is okay to be seen. They're like, oh yeah, I'm the, they're the ones that will more likely jump up to do karaoke than say the, the shy Virgo, right? <laughs> So, um, but the other thing with Leo is they are highly, highly creative, like in very, very strange ways. And, oh yes. And the other thing is that Leos are the romantics of the Zodiac. So I don't know if, if these charms are talking about some sort of romance coming in or getting more focused on family and kids. I mean, each of you, it's going to be different. So um, you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. So we have a little teeny tiny one here. I'm just trying to see what it is. Oh my goodness. I didn't even know I had this. So this is a heart that's kind of wrapped up. Um, it's two hearts. It's almost like a, a Celtic heart. They're doing almost like an affinity symbol. And where I was saying that that Leo is like romance i feel like you know with that heart in the infinity symbol i don't even have it facing right there is something about love happening here for you guys love relationships that can be even friendships guys it's, it's not always just um you know intimate ones but we also have a heart 
So there it's bang. You know, we have three, um, three symbols representing love relationships. So I have to say that that is a big thing going on here. Um, interesting here is that, okay, so we also have two keys on its own. And look at that. I didn't even realize. I'm actually going to bring that closer to the camera. Um, this, this one also has a heart in it. So that's four hearts in this reading. And if you look at the other charm readings, they had none or one, you know, like not very many at all. So yeah, there's a huge message around love and relationships and your own love for yourself, right? Because sometimes and often it's our own relationship with ourselves that we need to build first. So, you know, this just kind of struck me. I was going to read the um, cherries, but this just struck me because we have this big squid right here with his squiggly legs and we have a book. And, you know, squid is, a you know, sometimes it's about protecting ourselves because squids squirt this ink and, you know, kind of muddy the water so their predators can't find them. But I, I'm not getting that vibe with you guys in this. I feel like, amazingly, that this is more about the ink that that um, squid squirts. And we've got the book. And I feel like there's something about writing, getting things into writing, writing emails, sending a text, you know, uh, like opening up this line of communication somehow. I'm really getting that vibe. Um, it's really strong and and you will know for yourself what resonates with you in what way that they're talking about with the ink and the book so the other thing I wanted to mention is that we have two fruit here we have a strawberry and we have um, the cherry and so with that I feel like they're talking about you know enjoying the sweetness of life and um, really allowing yourself to give to yourself, you know, treat yourself in some way, some form. I feel like that's what they're talking about, you know, and it also could be about, you know, as far as health, watching what you're eating and not eating too many sweets. But I really can't say that that's ever a good thing because God, sweets are good. <laughs> Just my opinion. Um, but I do feel like there is something about giving to yourself, nurturing yourself, and allowing yourself to have the, those special things. Now, I can't read them all, but please do pause the video if you'd like and, um, you know, see what else you can see or what else pops up to you. And be sure to share it if you see anything, because I always love to read that. Anyway, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being here. I just have so much love and gratitude for you guys. I hope that this has helped. I hope you have an amazing week, and I will see you guys again next week. Take care.